Hello YouTube, Canuck Moro Vlogs here, and I decided, you know what, it was pretty hard for me to figure out this stuff, so I decided I would help someone out. Before you hear, you see a little selection of various motorcycle riding gear and protective gear, which honestly is probably one of the most important things you can ever buy for your bike as an accessory. Doesn't matter how, how cool your bike looks, it's not that cool if you fall on it and you're all scraped up, you won't want to ride it again. So, protection's key, safety is everything. What I have before you is two different basic styles of, of riding gear for different kinds of bikes. Like I know they're interchangeable, I interchange them all the time. Different different applications for different uses. But here's what I use, this is what I I personally bought myself because it worked for me and I'm hoping maybe what I do here will work for you. So down on the left here, we have your basic starter sport bike setup. By sport bike, I mean like a Ninja or or a GSXR, R anything from Yamaha. But basically, it's you want something colorful and textile. And for a helmet, you're going to want full face. Now, if you want modular, like if the look here, if the face flips up like that, that's that's your choice. Like this helmet right here has, if you look down in here. It has a it has kind of like a uh, sunglass visor, so that's just one extra thing that this helmet has. It's pretty pretty modular, and that's why they call them modular helmets or or a flip open face. There's a whole bunch whole bunch of names for them. Now this this is a G Max helmet, so they're one of the kind of middle of the road motorcycle gear brands. Uh, it's definitely a sport bike styled helmet. Like, this is just one extra thing. It has a light on the back. Well, I don't know who would ever really use that, but it's there. For a jacket, when I was looking out for mine, I started on a Ninja 250. I've probably said that in one of my videos before, and if not, well, now you know. I bought the Joe Rocket Atomic 11 jacket, and there's a few reasons for that. One, and probably most importantly, it was one of the cheapest options, I got my first bike at 16 and it was not a not a really high budget age and that's what that's what I bought because it was it was cheap it was effective it had all the padding right down the back shoulders elbows it's, it's really supportive like it's not floppy it keeps your arms in a nice comfortable riding position it has a removable inside liner if it gets warm it has venting all over it it's a really really awesome jacket and this is made by a company called Joe Rocket, which is which is a Canadian company, which was just one extra thing that helped. It was readily available. They're cheap. Didn't have to worry about spending an arm and a leg. Now that was for the sport bike jacket. At, at that same time, I bought some Joe Rocket boots. These are the Big Bang 2.0s. So they're, they're armored toe. They have a buckle here that keeps your laces in check, and also it's, it's a snap closure style, so just an extra level of retention. You snap that down, it looks kind of stupid right now without a foot in it because the whole boot collapses. Now these are absolutely awesome. You can get these for under 100 bucks, most places. I bought mine at Royal Distributing, which is pretty accessible. Like we have one just about 45 minutes from us. And that's why I, that's where I get all my stuff because they have literally everything and now they carry almost the entire joe rocket line so that's where i got my jacket obviously i bought my boots there and i kind of see gear as a three-tier system you got your jacket your helmet those are probably the two most important pants if you're going on a long ride i suggest some proper riding pants but for ease of use me i don't want to have to suit up the entire the entire system when i go for a five minute ride i wear a good good tough pair of jeans I know they're not perfect, but they're better than shorts, that's for sure. And they're pretty durable, so that's what I use. There are riding jeans, but I am I might get some soon. I've been looking into them, but I just haven't had a real reason to buy them. I ride the bike to school, and I don't want to sit there in a 2 millimeter pair of blue jeans, which is, if you didn't know, 2 millimeters is it's a little thick for clothes. But that's my sport bike setup. I occasionally use the jacket for my cruiser, but it looks kind of dumb. The cruiser's red and this jacket's bright blue. 
but I bought the blue one because the Ninja I rode was bright blue with gray. It matched absolutely perfectly. I also have a gray silverish helmet that matched it, which actually came with the bike. And that brings up another topic. If you get a free helmet, do not, and I say do not, expect it to be in good condition. Buy a new helmet. If you read any inside label of a helmet or any, any manual on a box or anything, it always says, if dropped, get the helmet inspected or replaced immediately. Because once they're dropped, the structural integrity of the foam and whatever's underneath, and not, not to mention just the outside shell, is compromised. It's meant for one fall. It's meant to protect you for one fall. They're meant to, they're meant to completely disperse the impact. That's what they do. They're not meant to be bulletproof. They're not meant to be dropped a million times. If you drop that helmet on any surface that's hard enough, if you can't get it warranted or inspected or replaced for any decent cost, just go get any regular DOT or Department of Transportation certified helmet. They're not expensive, but if you get a nice one, it can be. And that brings, that brings to the next topic. Don't cheap out on your helmet. I, I admit it is okay to get a pretty low cost helmet to start out. I did. This is this is only my sec this is my second helmet. I needed something good for motovlogging that wasn't wasn't super cheap. Like I could trust it and everything. One with a couple nice features, but it also needed to be full face because you can't mount this the camera on the side of your cheek. That would hurt a bugger to pull off. Like that's my cruiser helmet when I'm just just boogieing around. I absolutely love that thing. I'll get to that in a minute. But if you're going to do moto vlogging or any really anything, I completely recommend the full face. But there are some some applications where it might not be perfect. So for that reason, I suggest full face and a high quality helmet. Do not be afraid to cheap out. Actually, sorry, don't be afraid to spend more. Because in all honesty, you get what you pay for. Buy the best helmet that you yourself can afford. But do not go out and buy the most expensive you can find because they're all meant to do one thing. They're meant to break the first time you use them. And I'm being honest about that. That's how they're designed. They're not meant to stay intact. They're meant to disperse impact and self-destruct the helmet and not you. So don't buy a million dollar helmet because the first time you drop it, guess what? You just wasted that money because you have to go buy another one. Uh, boots, again, there, there are a million options, but I just suggest armored toe. And it doesn't help to have a little bit of reinforcement here for your shift levers, like the little peg that you click up on. It's probably self-explanatory, really. And I don't recommend anything with laces, but if it does have laces, like my boots, that was kind of a stupid recommendation, really. But if it does have laces, make sure it has some sort of lace retention system. So when you have all those loops out here, tuck them under, lock them in. Because the worst thing that you can do is get your foot caught up on your bike with the laces. They can get sucked into a chain. They can oh, There's a million things that can go wrong with laces. Just avoid them. And if, if you do buy a boot that has laces and they're longer, cut them. Or buy a pair of shorter laces because that's more dangerous than having a loose boot. Now that was your sport bike side. I did have a sport bike, and that's why I'm eligible to say all this, because that was, that was my bike. I used it. Now, if you've seen my videos, you know that I have a Honda Shadow, which is a metric cruiser, which just simply means it's either Japanese or non-Harley. So in other words, just non-Harley or Indian. Anything with mostly metric bolts, like the rest of the known world uses metric. This is what I recommend. For a cruiser, you can honestly use any jacket you want because it's up to you. As long as you're safe, I think that's cool. I recommend leather, though, because the way textile works, it's just like the helmet. It's a one-time crash fall thing. It's meant to protect you, and that's why they're cheap. Leather, they're quite a bit more abrasive resistance. Like, you can you can scrape the crap out of that, and it may look scuff, but it's still intact. That's why the leather's been used for everything. That's just simply how it is. But for a cruiser, most people will go with the half half shell beanie style style of helmet, and I I love the wind in the face feel, so that's why I chose the beanie style. But I again I didn't cheap out on my helmet. I got one of the best I could get, simply the best helmet I could afford. 
I got a Voss 888 CF, so carbon fiber. The Boss Triple Eight. That's what it is. Now, this is DOT, and it's a couple other different certifications. If you can get anything past DOT, like if you can get Snell certified or European certified, those are much better. It simply just means it's more protective. It's gone through harder tests. If you can get a Snell certified helmet for cheaper than a DOT, go for it. It's a better helmet. End of story. But just like that one, I personally don't recommend riding with a helmet half face without any sort of eye protection because the second you get a little stone in your eye it's hard as hell to drive this helmet came with two different face shields they just simply click in i'm not going to do it now because it's a pain in the ass one hand but they just click in it came with that and then a sunglass it's a tinted one just like that now that works as eye protection and it works as sunglasses it also has a little sun visor here now, I don't have a GoPro mount on this. You may be wondering why. Well, simply because it looks stupid. And I don't need it. I Whenever I use, use the GoPro while riding, I just use that helmet because it has a nice one on the side. I can run a microphone in through the cheek piece, which I will. The microphone's on its way. But this is just a touring helmet. And that's, that's honestly all it's meant for. It's just meant to have a helmet, but don't expect it to be very good in a fall. Your entire lower half of your face is vulnerable. Gloves, that's up to you. I, as long as they're motorcycle or dirt bike gloves or anything meant to be abrasive, a lot of people I know use mechanic gloves, and I, I love them. They're good for everything. Just make sure they have some sort of clasp on them. Well, not clasp, but like a Velcro retention system just so you can tighten them up. Gloves have multiple purposes. One, if you've ever gone, gone behind a big truck on a slightly dusty road you feel every one of those little pellets hit your fingers and it sucks if you're not behind a batwing fairing or or if your hands aren't covered that sucks now this this is a big one if you're going to buy a leather jacket keep in mind most of them are not padded simply because they're meant to be air quotes cool comfortable and stylish this is the best leather jacket I've ever found and this is the Joe Rocket V Sport jacket it's it runs quite a bit more than the Atomic 11 I got that for just a, just a hair under 200 bucks brand new from Royal these retail for about 450 but it's a sport bike jacket it's a cruiser jacket it's literally whatever you want it to be just because simply it is it's padded it has all the, all the same all the same pads CE rated it has a back pad, everything. It has a removable vest liner, which may seem kind of weird, but it does. Simply that just that just unzips, comes right out. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. If it gets too hot, just whip that out, put it in a saddlebag. It folds up real nice. Best part about the V-Sport is it has, the, has some retention straps here, so you don't get all that wind up under you. It has a million different vents in the thing. It's cool. It's quite a bit heavier than textile, but it's worth it. Like they're comfortable and they look sweet. Holy crap, 13 minutes. Well, I've seemed to wrap this video up pretty pretty slow. But anyway, that's what I recommend for a new new rider or even an experienced rider. Just if you need new gear, don't overlook some of the cheaper stuff. Except for the helmet. Get the best helmet you can afford because it's it's worth it. You may not think you're gonna crash, but every motorcycle rider crashes. If it's on the driveway, going out, you hit a hit a gra patch of gravel, every rider drops a bike it's just a matter of when and you'd rather have that when in your driveway than on a freeway but you always plan for worst case scenario with a helmet because if you fall that is your worst case scenario go full face but if you really really want a half shell helmet get the best one you can find with some eye protection boots they're they're a dime a dozen for whatever you can choose you can have big long knee-high harley boots if you really desire it. I just wanted something slim that I can still wear and not feel like a complete, for better, lack of a better word, one percenter who's just trying to be a badass. I, I don't agree with it. Gloves, anything. Helmets, best you can afford. Jackets, your choice. There's a million of them. A million textiles. Leather, you gotta pick and choose. 
just going to like a Danier or something, which by the way is closing down. Danier or something, just getting a plain old leather jacket. That's not a bike jacket. It may look like it. it's not a motorcycle jacket. It has no protection. The leather guarantee is not cowhide or top green. It's just fashion leather. Not useful at all. Get a proper jacket. And besides that, get your bike. Get whatever you want. It's up to you. I will never tell someone that they're a loser for picking a certain bike. It's your choice. It's your style. It's your fun. It's your ride. Never take anyone's opinion for more than a grain of salt. If a Harley guy goes up to your Honda and says it's gay, well, that's his, that's his opinion, but I like my Honda. I could have afforded a Harley. Could have got a Sportster. I didn't want a Sportster. I wanted a nice low-slung cruiser, and it looks my Honda looks exactly like a street bob. That's just that's my that's my style. That's what I wanted, and it was all chromed out. I bought mine used, and I'm glad I did because I could never afford all those accessories on it. Just the grips alone are a hundred bucks retail. Like that's just how it is. Stuff's expensive. Pick and choose. Now I'm gonna leave it at that because ultimately I'm just giving some recommendations. If you have any questions about the gear, what else I recommend that I don't have, which I can't recommend very much. Like I chose what I wanted and what fit me. Just leave a comment in the comment section, obviously. Uh, you can subscribe and you can email. You can do whatever you want. I'll, I'll usually get back to you pretty quick. But that's, that's my recommendations. That's what I did. And I can't recommend something I didn't do. So you have a great day. Have fun riding. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.